a while back, I did a video on an application called Font Preview, which was a terminal-based way to go and preview your fonts. Now, whilst being like a nice gimmick, it wasn't really that useful as an application because when you wanted to preview your font, you would just select the font and then open it up inside of an image viewer. So it wasn't really previewing fonts per se. It was really no easier than using something like, you know, LibreOffice and just changing through the fonts. However, it turns out that version of Font Preview was actually the worst version of Font Preview and I should have done one on the Uberzug version. So today, that's what we're going to do. So Font Preview Uberzug, as the name would suggest, uses Uberzug to go and display images directly inside of your terminal. And I think it's fair to say that this is a proper Font Previewer. Now, obviously, there are GUI applications to go and do this. However, I find that the GUI applications are kind of all really, really overkill. All I want to do is just see what the font looks like. Let's say that I am, for example, making a website and I have a Vim buffer open and I'm not really sure what font I want to actually use for the title. All I need to do is go and have the fonts I might want to use, go and scroll through them, and find something that actually catches my eye. Now, because this is using Uberzug to display the image, the same caveats as always do apply. It may not work in every single terminal. I know it works in Alacrity, that's what we're using right now. I know it works in your XVT and ST, but I don't know if it works in things like, say, the GNOME terminal or anything like that. I'd recommend going and testing that for yourself or there's probably people online have already tested it and you can go and find out there. Now, besides Uberzug, the interface we're actually using right here is FZF. I believe you have to have base FZF installed. However, because Font Preview Uberzug is pretty much just a shell script, if you want to go and modify it to, say, use, I don't know, any of the other alternative FZF clients, you can probably go and do that fairly easily. And then to actually generate the image we're seeing here, it's being done with image magic. When you're just scrolling through normally, there's not really any issues with what's being previewed. You might encounter an issue though, if you go try to resize the window, because what's gonna happen is FCF doesn't actually refresh the preview until it needs to preview the next thing. So right now the image is actually taking up the entire screen. If I go and select the next preview, as we can see, it reduces the font size and makes it fit in this screen. If I now go back to the previous size, now the image is taking up a very small portion of the screen. So all you need to do to fix that is just load up the next thing. It's sort of just a limitation with FCF and actually relying on an existing interface rather than making an interface specifically for this application. Now, to be fair, I am using a fairly powerful system, but I've noticed that things like, say, LF or VIFM, when they use Uberzug to actually display images, they kind of run fairly slowly. In this case, though, it seems to be loading everything basically instantly, and it is actually having to generate an image with image magic as well, so I would have expected there to be at least some level of lag, but it seems to be almost instant. Now, there is a bit of a delay when I go and scroll through stuff this quickly, but it's not really that big of a deal because most of the time, you're not going to be doing that. Now, we can also test things besides the alphabet and basic symbols. One of those things we can test is ligatures. So, first thing we need to do is go and change the text that's being used in the preview because right now, none of those combinations actually were ligatures. So, the way we go and change the text being used is by setting an environment variable. And I found out recently that you can actually go and set an environment variable before you actually run the application and it will just set it for that one run of the application. I don't think this is anything that crazy. I just didn't actually know about this. So in this case, we wanna set font preview underscore preview underscore text. And I'm gonna set it to equals equals, triple equals, www and slash equals as well. So if we go and run this now, and let's go down to, I think, fear of code I have installed. As we can see, that's showing the ligatures perfectly fine. If you do want this to be the permanent text though, you can go and just set this environment variable in somewhere like say your ZSH env or your bash profile. In this case though, I don't really think it makes that much sense. Now, there is actually a shorter way we can go and write this as well. And the way we do that is with the dash T argument. I guess dash T is supposed to be for text. So let's go and write say, this is a preview text and go and run the application. And as we can see, that's the text being used. 
So instead of having to write all of this out, this is a much easier way to go and do so. Now, because we are working with image magic, the vast majority of Unicode does actually work in the preview text. There are a couple of exceptions, and I'll show you those in just a moment. But let's say instead we wanted to go and preview a Japanese font, for example. So what you want to do to do that is maybe have some hiragana. So let's go and run this. And you'd be surprised by how many fonts that aren't actually Japanese fonts actually have hiragana support. So for example, uh, actually any of these. These are definitely not Japanese fonts. Let's just scroll through it see if we find anything else that actually matches. Now that I say this, I'm probably not going to actually find anything that are... Okay, no, those actually were the Japanese fonts, but I know I do have some fonts that just randomly support hiragana. Obviously, with kanji, it's going to be a bit more hit and miss, but the popular kanji should be supported by basically any Japanese fonts. So let's go down to the IPA fonts, and those ones are right there. Now, the only thing I know that doesn't play nicely with image magic is colored emoji. So let's go and say, just run it with this one right here and go down to a font I know supports colored emoji. So for example, Noto Color Emoji. And unlike some of the other ones where it's just straight up not a symbol in the actual set, in this case, it doesn't actually know how to read the font. So I'm guessing this font just doesn't work properly in Image Magic, and trying to use it is just going to make it crash out. So the obvious use case for something like this is you want to test out what a specific phrase actually looks like. So let's say, I don't know, uh, Brody's Shop, for example. And then we can go and see what this looks like in each of my fonts, and we can decide on, okay, let's say... I don't know, this font right here is the one we like. Now, if we find a font we like, we can actually go and press enter on this, and it's going to tell us what the font actually is called, what style it has, and then where the font is actually located. So if you want to go and, I don't know, do some parsing on the font, or whatever it is you want to do on the font, it's very easy to go and find it. Now, there's not really that much configuration we can go and do. One of the things we can go and do, though, is set the maximum font size. So you might have noticed that when the preview window was made smaller, it lowered the font size. So in this case, the maximum font size is going to be 24. Let's go and run this. As we can see, the font is much, much smaller than before. But if I go and, say, add another window here and select the next preview, the font is even smaller now. Instead of using the environment variable we were just using right there, we could also use the dash S option as well to have the exact same effect. So let's say we set it to 12 this time, and as we can see, the font is quite, quite small this time. If you don't like having this massive white box here, there is something you can go and do to change that. So what you could go and do is set the background color of the image to the same as the background color of your terminal and then set the foreground color to whatever foreground color you want to see it at. So for example, something like this, where dash B is the background color and dash F is the foreground color and it's going to look a little something like this. Personally, I think this looks much, much better, and this is probably how I'm going to run the application going forward. Now, it could have very easily been set up inside of the font preview script to go and do this automatically for you, because there actually are ways to go and query the terminal for what the background and foreground color are supposed to be, but that feature isn't there, so you have to go and do it yourself. As for the environment variable you need to use, it is this one right here. So font preview underscore BG underscore color for the background. And then obviously, if you want to set the foreground color instead of BG, you do FG instead. Now, if you'd like to install this yourself, it is available on the AUR, but it's literally just a POSIX shell script. So if you don't want to do it like that, basically all you need to have installed is FCF, UberZug, and Image Magic. Basically, just download the GitHub repo, put the script wherever it is you normally put your scripts, make it executable, and then it's done. But if you're exceptionally lazy, it also does come with a make file as well, which will just go and put it in where your normal applications are, and then if you run the make file again to uninstall it, it will then go and delete the file. But it's, it's just a shell script. I think you can manage this by yourself. Currently, there are no ways to actually go past options directly the FZF to modify how that works, but because it is just a shell script, just go into the script, search for where FZF is running, Let's see if we can find it somewhere. Yeah, here. Just go and modify the options it's using, and there you go. Now that you have an application to go and test all of your fonts, if you want to go and show off all of this new knowledge you've gained, one way you can go and do that is by making a website and hosting it on Linode. If it runs on Linux, you can run it on Linode. They have the distros you'd expect available, like Ubuntu and Debian, but also Arch and Gentoo, because why not? 
They've got multiple server plans available, so whether you want to host a blog or a personal VPN, you know there's going to be one that fits you. Going forward, I'll be using Linode to host all of my community game nights. If you need help, Linode has 24-7, 365 support available by phone regardless of your plan size. So right now, you guys can get started on Linode with $100 credit by going to the link on screen or in the description down below. Linode was in the game three years before Amazon entered cloud computing, so you know they know their stuff. A huge thank you to Linode for sponsoring the channel. Thank you guys for watching. I think this is a really cool application, and if you don't already have a font previewing application already installed, because you probably already have the dependencies around anyway, I would say there's not really that much harm in going and installing this. So, I think that's pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David, Monza, Will, Brennan, Chico, Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Mitchell, Peter D, Stephen, Tony, Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support my work, the links down below to my Patreon, Subscribestar, LibrePay, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and... I just realized I wasn't showing patrons. I'm out.